England, where uh, my British host said, well, I don't really have to mention his book because he's one of these self-promotional Americans that will probably advertise it himself. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's really sad that our, our British cousins have these, these negative images about us. I just think that it's totally unjustified. <laughs> Thank, thank you all for coming today. I know, uh, let, me, let me now get serious. Um, you know, we, I want to start off with starting with an area of really common ground that, that all of us who work on development share, and that's the need for compassion towards those in the world who have the least. Uh, you've all seen pictures like this. And surely nothing is more important than working every day of our lives. And I, myself, kind of feel the need to rededicate every day my, my career, my life, pay any price, bear any burden, so that one day it seems like this will never occur ever again. And that's, that's what it's all about. Now, agreeing on that, we can still disagree vigorously on methods, on ideas, and that's what I want to, to talk about today, about some of these disagreements, and some of them may be sharp and polemical, but we need to have these debates in order to, by the process of debate, arrive at what is the best path for the world's poor to escape poverty. So, unfortunately, an aid by the way, is, is the sound working okay for those of you in the back? Is this lapel working okay? Raise your hand if you're having any trouble hearing. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, let me see what I can do here. Is that better? That's better, okay. It's one thing they teach you in Public Speaking 101. Always make sure the audience can actually hear what you're saying. Um, you know, uh, unfortunately in aid, as I was saying, uh, compassion too often translates into what I'm going to call today uh, authoritarian paternalism, that, that outsiders choose goals for the poor and tell the poor how they should reach them. And so I want to give this perspective on something that usually attracts a lot of sort of warm, fuzzy feelings, and that's the Millennium Development Goals. You know, these Millennium Development Goals are all about extremely good things. Of course, all of us want good th these good things to happen. Um, but when you see how these are actually implemented and what, what actions they actually trigger, what you realize is that international organizations that are not democratically accountable to the world's poor or really to anyone else are choosing 48 targets for the poor to meet by 2015. They're and this, this approach is what I'm going to call a sort of authoritarian paternalism. Now, of course, it does reflect the compassion that we already talked about that is so necessary, that this, a lot of good people have good intentions here. But at the same time, there's too much of a patronizing attitude that international organizations know better than the poor what their interests are. And under authoritarian paternalism, the aid organizations pursuing these Millennium De Development Goals, this is even worse, that they themselves are never held accountable for what actually happens to the poor as a result of any of these actions. So we have 52 international donor agencies announced with great poop law in 2005, a global plan to meet the 48 different targets for the Millennium Development Goals. And then aid agencies say this is their collective responsibility, which is also already right away gives you a kind of worry that I'm going to talk about, that they say it's their collective responsibility. What does that mean about who is held accountable for meeting these goals? Um, and then even worse, I can I could tell you with, uh, but I don't have time to tell you, but I can tell you in, br in brief that these kind of international targets have already been announced many times before in previous decades and have not been met. And so what this Millennium Development Goals exercise is, it's not really a new approach, but it's a recycling of an old approach that has not worked before, unfortunately. 
And specifically, we continue to have very specific episodes of aid agencies failing to do things that help the poor. And let me just tell you one quick anecdote. I work with a, a woman uh, named Diane Bennett at NYU, who, uh, along with working at NYU, runs her own NGO in South Sudan in a very remote county called the, in the eastern part of Upper Nile State in South Sudan. In 2001, when she was operating there, a measles epidemic broke out. And she immediately petitioned the WHO and UNICEF, the kind of frontline agencies, for the very cheap and, and easy to administer measles vaccines that could save the lives of these children. Uh, but the vaccines never arrived. I could try to explain what went wrong, that there were promises that were made that were not kept, there were excuses that were given that, that explained inaction. But the bottom line is that Today, as of 2009, the measles vaccines have still not arrived in this remote region in eastern Upper Nile State in South Sudan. And during this period, hundreds of children have died from measles, and their graveyards surround the villages where their parents live. Now, this is you know, a, an inexcusable dereliction of duty on the part of the aid agencies. And yet no one has ever held them accountable for these kind of derelictions of duty. So we have far too many, this is just one anecdote, but there are far too many of these anecdotes. And the, the really bad news about the Millennium Development Goals is if you really kind of think about them as an economist or a political scientist and just think about who is actually doing what, you realize something that's so unpleasant that I, I decided to put it in very small type because I... Uh, I'm kind of a shy person. I don't. I like to say real controversial things normally. Um, so I, I guess I have to read this to you just to be, you know, complete my contract here with, uh, with you as a speaker. Uh, what these, what it says in small type here is what the number one problem is with aid. Why aid doesn't work better? It's simply this: nobody is individually responsible for any one result. We had this glorious campaign for the Millennium Development Goals, and we had these good things, and we had celebrities, and we had rock concerts, and we had 52 donor agencies. But at the end of the day, nobody is individually responsible for any one result. Nobody is individually responsible for any one result. 